here in Yavapai County. Anything to say? James is not a wealthy guy. Uh, no. he's, he's not able to post $5 million in bond. Court documents show he's more than $4 million in debt. Crime Arizona, spiritual pathway to peril. The greatest gift you've been given by your creative source, your marvelous mind. James Arthur Ray was quickly rising in fame and fortune. He was becoming a really big deal in both pop culture and also in the self-help, self-improvement world, which was exploding at the time. Your greatest spiritual calling is to find your purpose in this lifetime and to pursue it and to do it with excellence. He has a very kind of folksy way about him that I think definitely draws people in. Most people first saw him in the movie The Secret, then started seeing him appear often on major shows like Oprah and Larry King Live. You've got to, you've got to go three for three. You've got to have your thoughts, your feelings, and your actions all firing and in alignment. James focused his growing empire around one big concept, harmonic wealth. I learned the secret of creating harmonic wealth in my life. That's a life that is wealthy and abundant in all key areas, financial, relational, mental, physical, and spiritual. People were showing up in droves to see him speak. One of those families, the Browns. 38-year-old Kirby Brown was hooked and asked her mom, Jenny, to go to one of James Ray's events with her. I was very impressed by his style. Uh, his energy on stage, uh, his insight into people. Kirby's sister, Jean, remembers how enthusiastic Kirby was about all she was learning from James. Kirby had been living in Cabo San Lucas, navigating her own path. But I remember her telling me, oh yeah, you've got to read this book, it's so great. And um, so yeah, she, she had definitely told us about it. And actually my parents had both been to James Ray events with her. But my parents were always very respectful of us sort of finding our own way. His lifestyle began to reflect his popularity. James Ray International grossed $9.4 million in 2008. Jared Dillingham was a reporter for 3TV at the time, now Evening Anchor. It was an empire he was running. He had a lot of people working under him. He was uh, making expensive purchases. It was an empire, a lucrative empire he was running. I mean, he was living in Beverly Hills next to celebrities. And he was also looking for more opportunities to increase his wealth. He wrote that huge book bestseller, Harmonic Wealth. And in his mind, he was practicing what he preached. It was that aspect that just rubbed Jenny Brown the wrong way, even if his charm and charisma were impressive. There were some things that I was uncomfortable with. He was all about money and making more money. That was a big thrust. Um, when you think about your dreams for the future, you have to put a dollar sign on it. She wasn't the only one who began to feel that way. How many events did you attend of his over the years? Uh, I attended in just the three years before that, that specific sweat lodge in 2009, we attended uh, over 27 events and we traveled with him to Egypt and Peru. Connie Joy considered herself a student of James Ray's and was part of his inner circle. She was all in and was encouraged by these personal breakthroughs she was having from his teachings. Part of my purpose is to redefine spirituality because everything is spiritual. The man has a gift for teaching. But what Jenny saw financially, Connie experienced firsthand. Over the course of the three years, how much money do you think you've put into him and his events? Oh, that's a scary thought. Um, uh, probably 75,000 plus or minus up to 100,000. The drive was 100% about the money. He wanted to have the biggest, baddest events that would draw the most people. In 2009, once the horse blinders came off a bit for Connie, she took a step back from James. 
He wasn't happy that she said no to going to Sedona that year. He had a progression of seminars where you start at an entry level and then you work your way up. Spiritual warrior, the one that they had in Sedona, was the pinnacle. It's like the top of the pyramid. You're working your way all the way through the other events to get to that level. And the sweat lodge was the final exam. She had been to spiritual warrior before in 2007. And honestly, it kind of freaked her out then. I left after a certain point. I was like, no, this is nuts. But those who hadn't been really didn't know what it would all entail. At an event in San Diego, Kirby Brown signed up for Spiritual Warrior in Sedona. This was it. She was going to the retreat of all retreats. I was surprised to see how much people would pay for this kind of experience. $9,000, $10,000 for five days. This was going to change her life. And it did, but not in the way she or anyone wanted. There was something going on at that event that was not right. They trusted him. They trusted him. This is an act. This is scary. This is not okay. No matter where you go, you see these beautiful red rocks. Any hike you go on, it's gorgeous. Sedona is a place where God is very present, where the Holy Spirit is incredibly obvious. Sedona has long brought spirituality seekers to its famous terrain. There were, you know, lots of UFO calls and the Red Rock Yeti. Nowhere else in the county was I getting those kind of calls. Scott Masher is now the retired sheriff of Yavapai County. For years, he was an investigator. Sedona is known for these famous vortexes. What is a vortex? Well, from what I know, is a vortex is a location where people can go into different dimensions. There are vortexes allegedly around the Sedona area. We wanted to go to one of the areas where these vortexes are. One of them is here at Bell Rock, and people claim the energy is so strong over here that it actually makes these cypress and juniper trees grow from the ground in a twisted way. You can understand how people would be just captivated and, and, and feel something spiritual just by walking out there, you know, seeing the colors and the landscape and everything like that. It almost it, there's nothing like otherworldly yes. or like another planet, 100%. maybe. Yeah. yeah. It's an Arizona resort that offers spiritual healing. It's what drew James Ray to Sedona, to have his pinnacle event spiritual warrior at a retreat space called Angel Valley. This is a place where it is very easy to connect with the ancestors of the land. Amira Hamilton founded Angel Valley with her husband two decades ago. The grounds sprawl for acres with labyrinths, pathways, and different designs. We, f we believe that nature is the best healer, the best, the best way to get in touch with yourself. It's quiet, it's peaceful, it's remote, it's beautiful. Chaos is, is just the opposite of anything we ever did here. When did you first meet James Ray? We met James Ray in 2003. It's also the location of what some consider the darkest page in Sedona history. I said to James Ray, I never want this again. You're pushing us too far. Okay, what's the problem? Two people not breathing. There was no call. It was one of the most bizarre nights in the newsroom because we heard some traffic over the scanner, but it was so unclear what was going on up there. There's a sweat lodge. A sweat lodge? Yes. Okay. All right. Okay. Are you there by yourself? No, there's a lot of people here. This call initially came in through 911, and what caught my attention was the amount of victims. Scott Masher gets to the scene to find a situation unlike anything he had ever seen. There were people in such various stages of medical distress. I mean, there were people that were unconscious. It started to come in pretty quick information that it seemed heat related. Heat illness, heat exhaustion, heat stroke. There was this large, odd tent looking structure in the middle. I don't mean to make light of it, but I remember thinking um, as the helicopter flew over, it looked like the set of the TV show Lost, like people who had survived a plane crash gathered all the tarps and blankets from the wreckage and created a shelter and were living in it. 
and we soon came to find out that shelter was the sweat lodge which had been used in this ceremony. Jared would learn through his reporting the conditions James put participants through in the sweat lodge as part of this retreat were extreme. There was one flap on the end, which was the entrance and the exit. You had to walk in single file, and the participants said they formed like two rings around a pit in the middle. And in the pit were these hot stones. Stones were outside in a fire, and somebody with a pitchfork was bringing the stones in, putting them in the pit, and then dumping all this water on. The water would sizzle, and the whole place would fill quickly with steam. Participants would say they'd feel pressure to stay inside, to not let James down but were terrified. I read a statement from a victim who was drug out, who thought he was having a heart attack. He was saying, I don't want to die, I don't want to die. And a witness had said, James Ray told him it was a good day to die. They wanted out and you're telling them no. And that's pretty reckless. One of those who didn't make it out, Kirby Brown. On Friday, October 9th, a state trooper came to our door at 8.15 in the morning to tell us that she had passed in a sweat lodge in Sedona, Arizona. What I learned was that people had told Ray that she was in trouble, she was breathing funny, and he did nothing. He did nothing. Information poured in. Participants had to shave their heads at the beginning of the retreat. They did what was called a vision quest for days with no food or water, living off the desert land and writing in journals. By the time they got to the sweat lodge, their bodies had endured a lot. It really seemed like this effort to strip away your yourself and any kind of, they would say, limiting beliefs that you had that were holding you back. Kirby wasn't in her right mind to be making rational and safe decisions for herself when she was in that sweat lodge. Was it apparent at first that this was going to be a homicide case? Well, I, you know, you don't know. You, you don't assume, you just start gathering evidence. Did you ever talk to James Ray? No. Where did he go? I did not see him there. So you're there with the chaos and the person who hosted this retreat up and left. From what I was told, he went to his room. I, I had not seen him, talked to him. It's that detail that made the entire situation worse for Jenny Brown. There was all this information and I'm like, this is crazy. This is, this is criminal. You know, someone in, in your care is in distress and, and you don't do anything. You, you walk away. He wound up going up to his room and showering and having something to eat. Helicopters were arriving to medevac people to local hospitals, and he leaves the scene. Kirby Brown and James Shore died at the scene. Liz Newman died at the hospital days later. I think about my mom every day. I cry every day and just dealing with it from moment to moment, trying to get back to a normal life. More than 20 people required hospital care. This was a complete disaster. The Browns got a call, not immediately from James, but days later. But basically the phone call was pretty much all about him. When he wanted to let me know that Kirby was in a wonderful place and had had a wonderful week. And I just said, uh, yeah, too bad it was with you in Sedona. And the thing that really stuck with me was that he said, this is the worst thing that's ever happened to me. And right then it was like, oh, man, this is, you're making this all about you. Remarkably, he left this event which turned deadly and with people still in the hospital from this sweat lodge retreat, he went on his speaking tour. He started showing up and giving his speeches. Immediately he fell under intense criticism and pressure and he cut that tour short. The media firestorm that would come would not spare James at all. It was fierce and brutal. People cried out to Mr. Ray that somebody fell into the fire. We're throwing up. Uh, this woman is not breathing. And in each incident, each time this was called to Mr. Ray's attention, his response was, leave them alone, leave them lie, we'll deal with it later. He consciously uh, was aware that people were in terrible physical shape and he allowed them to lie there and die rather than bringing this, this death march to an end. Mr. Ray, say something to the families of those people who died in the sweat lodge. What would you say to them? 
Brady have anything to say? Say something. Not this morning, no. I'm, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the this powerful man to um, be accountable for what happened. The question was, would James Ray be convicted of manslaughter? James Ray was on trial for manslaughter. The prosecution and defense were quickly heated back and forth. Mr. Ray didn't force anyone to go into the sweat lodge. Mr. Ray didn't force anyone to stay in the sweat lodge. People have a right to choose for themselves. Many witnesses in this trial will testify that by the end of the week, when they entered Mr. Ray's sweat lodge for the grand finale event, his heat endurance challenge, they were exhausted, mentally weak, and fully conditioned to follow Mr. Ray's instructions. It was a lot for the jury to have to decide. James said he certainly didn't intend for anybody to die, but was he criminally responsible for it after days of what some called severe manipulation? You will have to get to a point where you surrender and it's okay to die. And that's the extreme value of this ceremony. The most powerful testimony came from participants themselves. Melissa Phillips took the stand. I wanted to finish what I had started. I was hoping for an enlightening moment. I didn't want to disappoint either him, the Dream Team, or myself. Why, Miss Phillips, did you care about whether or not you would disappoint Mr. Ray? That I don't know. Melissa left the lodge, but walked back in. She was near Kirby Brown. A lot of people seemed out of it. What do you mean by that they seemed out of it? A lot of moaning, people lying down, some delirium. I said five or six times, there's something wrong. She needs to be taken out. Also nearby in the lodge was Beverly Bunn. And I can actually see, I can actually see Kirby's stomach going up and down. And I recognize her because I can see her in her bikini. So I know it's her. The doctor. I'm we sorry. Take a break. There was a lot of screaming going on. James said, quiet down, quiet down. I'm in charge here. Everyone needs to be quiet right now. There was mucus coming out of Sydney's nose and her mouth and her eyes were rolled back in her head and she wouldn't respond and she was barely, barely breathing. She was just testimony was powerful, but James's team had multiple arguments for defense. He turned on the owners of this retreat center. Did you know that James was going to turn on you at the trial? Um, we could expect it, but we didn't know what kind of things they would come out with. His attorneys said the Hamiltons built the sweat lodge, that James had no part in that. So did he have to, you know, write off on it? Did he look at it and say, this looks good? Well, you know, number one, we did a number of uh, sweat lodges there during that year that it was there, and it worked. Number two, James was so particular on just anything that we just assumed we didn't hear anything, any comments on the sweat lodge. If it was not right, we would have heard it, no doubt. His attorneys also said authorities failed to investigate other potential causes of death, like certain toxins and poisons that were out there, and quoted the medical examiner's testimony. It's 51-49%. You can't rule out organophosphates. It's 51-49%. Was any of that true? Well, we had... <laughs> We, we had um, some uh, uh, rat bait. Hey, we are out here in, in the country. There's critters, right? And what do you do when you have critters? You take the most effective, least invasive measures to keep your sweat lodge blankets from being eaten by the rats and making nice nests for the mice, right? So yes, we had the normal stuff. Attorneys said nobody overheated. Not a single person had a severely ele elevated temperature. 
Nobody was near the 104, 105, 106 mark for heat stroke. Amira said normally that sweat lodge was used by others for four rounds inside, with a total of 20 stones to create the heat. James did eight rounds, and he had a total of 63 stones in that. I mean, <laughs> nobody had ever done something like that. James did it different. Did you know he was going to do that many rounds, that many stones, and, and make it that intense? Um, no, looking back at it, I could have, but yeah, looking back at things, it's always 2020 eyesight, right? Liability forms were signed. James's attorney said he did not trap anybody inside. People decided not to go in the sweat lodge. People went in the sweat lodge and, and, and came out. People went back in. James Shore himself helped somebody out, and he chose to go back in. Everyone held their breath for the verdict. And upon our oaths, do you find the defendant, James Arthur Ray, on the offense of manslaughter as a result of the death of Kirby Brown as follows, not guilty. Do you find the defendant, James Arthur Ray, on the offense of negligent homicide as a result of the death of Kirby Brown as follows, guilty. guilty on three counts of negligent homicide. The sentence was two years in prison. Liz Newman's family was pleased. I spoke with uh, Liz and my three children um, and we're very happy with the verdict. We think um, justice has been served. Kirby Brown's family felt differently. He should have been convicted of manslaughter because he had prior knowledge that what he was doing was dangerous. Do you think he cared? No, I don't think he cared. Was two years enough for three lives? You know, you tell me. <laughs> hey, this is James. And Barry. Today, let's James talk about Ray James is back. He currently has an active YouTube channel, podcast, and website where you can sign up for Zoom seminars and courses ranging from $400 to $8,000. Perhaps the greatest look into his mind now, a book he wrote after prison called The Business of Redemption. In it, he talks about moments in prison and what he feels he's learned from it all. The press had packed the parking lot and cameras were rolling. By now it was dark and everything was lit with massive press floodlights. A sea of people pushed against the barricades they had constructed to get their best shot not only people from the press, but townspeople as well. I felt like a gladiator being led to the slaughter. As ugly and painful as this place was, I chose to be grateful to be here versus gone. And with that choice, another shift occurred. I made a decision to get over it, to get up and get on with it. James puts it simply in his book. I am responsible for the deaths of three people. At my urging, three people, James Shore, Liz Newman, and Kirby Brown, pushed themselves too far, ending their lives and forever changing mine. This all does not sit well with the Brown family, who is currently working on legislation in New York to create stricter training requirements in the self-help industry. When you see that he's back out doing self-help and, and profiting off of it, what goes through your mind? Well, it really upsets me that he's profiting off the story of my daughter's death and, and twisting it into he is the victim of this event. The Browns still grapple over the years they've lost with Kirby. Well, I've had this whole life since she died that she is not a part of. I have two kids now, so I think, you know, when someone close to you dies, you miss a lot of the could have beens or the would have beens of, you know, the things that they should have been there for in your life. It's hard to think she doesn't know your kids. Like she would have been their aunt. Yeah, yeah. And she would have been like the coolest aunt ever. <laughs> After years of reflection about the way James Ray changed their family and his behavior and actions ever since, 
Ginny Brown has settled on this. You can forgive someone, but never trust them. 